Hello and welcome back to the latest episode of Formula One for Fummies. I am pleased to be back with the latest episode after a week of much needed hibernation, but rest assured I am refreshed, revitalized and reinvigorated. Which is a good thing since this week's episode deals with a very contentious topic in Formula One at the moment. The tyres. Now you as a naive, helpless fummy might ask me, how could tyres in any way be a contentious topic? Well, this is why you should listen to this episode. I am here to educate you and to lift you out of the dark spiral that is the world of ignorance. So let's maybe start from the beginning and explain exactly how tyres work at the moment. So, for the 2019 Formula 1 season and for the past if, uh, like couple of seasons, it's been quite a few years now, almost a decade, Pirelli has been the sole tyre manufacturer in Formula 1. Now, previously, and you know, more than a decade or so ago, there were more than one tyre manufacturer and then it was sort of a competition between the tyre manufacturers as well uh, to sort of... Uh, see who can make the best tire effectively so who can make a tire that can last long but grip well uh, yeah so it was sort of like a competition within the tire manufacturers and 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 this is sort of colloquially referred to as the tire war era so and just for information purposes but yeah for the last couple of years Pirelli has been the only tire manufacturer in Formula One which then means that all the teams use the same tires. So all the teams use the tires manufactured by Pirelli, which then means they need to build a car that can work well with these tires. And that then also means that tire testing is therefore a very important part. So whenever the, the teams get the opportunity to do some track testing, then you know trying to understand the tires and how the tires work form a very important part of this process since they need to be able to build a car that can optimize the way the car uses the tires. So for this season, uh, Pirelli manufactures what they call five dry tires and two wet tires. And the two wet tires are the ones called in the intermediate tire and the other one is called the full wet. So in terms of the dry tires, they basically have five different types. So these five ty different types of tires are named from C1 to C5. So you get C1, C2, C3, C4, and C5, with C5 being the softest compound and C1 being the hardest compound. Now, when I speak about soft and hard, it's literally the rubber that's softer um, f with the C5 than what it would be for the C1 or obviously any, any of the other tires that's manufactured by Pirelli. So a while before the race... Pirelli, before every sort of race on the calendar, Pirelli analyzes each of these tracks and they decide on three tires that are going to be made available for use every weekend. So, for example, Pirelli can choose, let's say, the C4, the C3 and the C2 tire for a specific weekend or the C1, the C4 and the C5 for a specific weekend. So they basically choose three out of the five tires that they that they produce to be used at each and every race uh, over the season. Then these three tires, they classify the softest as uh, the soft tire, the middle one as the medium tire, and the hardest one as the hard tire. So then when you watch a race, during every race, you'll see you know, the commentator speak about the soft tire, the medium tire, and the hard tire, which then just basically describes the actual you know, consistency of the tire and the three tires that Pirelli chose out of their arsenal of five tires that they produce. Now before each race, the teams can then decide their tire allocation for each car. So in other words, how many softs, hards and medium tires they want to use over the weekend. So the total amount of tires allocated to a team per car is 13 dry weather tires, where Pirelli chooses three out of the 13 sets. So Pirelli has a mandatory three tires that they decide each and every team needs to use. And then the remaining 10 sets of tires, the teams can then decide. So for argument's sake, Pirelli says over this specific race, you as a, all of the teams need to use two hard tires and one medium tire. And then for the remaining 10, the teams decide on, say, six soft, three medium, and one hard, which then therefore means they have 13 sets allocated to them that they can use over the weekend. 
So then over and above these, these dry tires that they have, they are also allocated four sets of intermediate tires and three sets of wet weather tires. And that's it. That's all they can use over the whole weekend. So therefore, across the three practice sessions and then qualifying and then lastly the race. Where, and this is a very important thing to remember. Uh, during any race that, that has no rain or where no rain falls during the race, you, the t- each and every team and each and every driver need to use at least two different types or compounds, as they call it, of tire. So, for example, you can't pot- do the whole race just on one set of hard tires. You need to have at least one pit stop where you switch tires to another compound or to another consistency of tire. And that obviously is a, is a very important part of sort of the dynamics of a race and and plays a very important part in the strategy that the team sort of follows when, when deciding on which type of tires to start the race on and then also which type of tires to use later on in the race. Now, this also sort of is a consequence of the last sort of really important trick with the tires and I've explained this a bit in my previous episode where I discussed the race weekend. Um, and it's important to remember that the top 10 qualifiers, so the top 10 drivers that qualified, must start on the actual tires that they use to make it into the top 10 qualifying shootout, i.e. the tires that they set their fastest lap with during qualifying two. The remaining drivers, so i.e. the drivers not qualified into the top 10, can start on any tire that they choose, which then leads to strategic opportunities. Okay, now in terms of the wet tires, I'm not going to say too much about them, but you get firstly the intermediate tire, which is sort of, let's well, as the name says, an intermediate between a fully dry tire and a fully wet tire. So this type of tire is usually used in, in mixed conditions, so where the track is sort of damp or wet in places, but not completely soaked. And uh, you'll see that the intermediate tires has some grooves uh, in the actual tire surface where the dry tires are completely slick or it's just a completely flat rubber surface and the grooves are there to actually displace water from the track. So actually pick up water from the track and spit it out so that the car doesn't have to drive through it. Now the wet tires are basically just an extreme version of the intermediates where it's more deeper grooves and these tires are used when the track is fully, fully wet and they are like proper puddles and it's actually treacherous conditions outside. Now, I think the thing to note about both the wet and the intermediate tires uh, is that they are obviously a lot slower in terms of lap time that they can produce. And if the track isn't wet, these tires overheat extremely quickly and loses a lot of its gripping capabilities if the conditions obviously are not right. So it's quite a quite an interesting strategic um, dilemma when it does start to rain during a race or when you know certain parts of the track are wet and certain parts of the track are not, because sort of the teams and the drivers need to make a call on whether the intermediate tire is going to be a faster or a slower option than a dry tire would necessarily be. So I mean, a wet weather race is usually an extremely exciting event mainly because of the tire strategies that are usually um it's sort of thrown up into the air and teams need to make a lot of judgment calls that they they weren't able to plan for beforehand so and then the last thing i think i just like to mention about the wet tires is so as i mentioned during a completely dry race you are um it's mandatory for you as a driver to use at least two different types of tire in your race however if it is a wet race all of that goes out of the window and you can use, you know, whichever tire you prefer. So obviously if it's rains throughout, you just, you just do your race on the full weights. But obviously if it does dry out, you can do soft tire, hard tire, medium tire, intermediate tire, whatever you want. There are, there are no rules around the type of tires that you must use. Okay, so that gives a brief and broad overview on the current situation in terms of the, in terms of the tires and the rules and the sort of um, intricacies around tire strategies and now let's get into why the tires in formula one is such a big deal at the moment and why it's just been in the news and why the team principals have been clutching their pearls and shouting and and you know sobbing big tears of despair and the main issue 
wait before let's maybe before we let's before we start with the main issue let's let's just give a bit of a background around what led to the tires being the way they are so in terms of a tire the three main concerns or two main concerns that you have with the tire is obviously that the tire degrades over time so as you drive around the track at extremely high speed the rubber surface of the tire degrades and becomes thinner right that's sensible like a normal road car tire will also you know lose its tread over time as you use it so that's the first issue and then the second issue is that these tires can also overheat and blister now this is very important because what used to happen last year with the tires Pirelli made last year is the surface of the tire used to heat up very quickly, but the actual core of the tire didn't heat up as quickly. And the effect that this then had on those specific tires is the tires formed blisters on the surface, so literal bubbles of rubber on the surface because the surface became so hot versus what uh, was going on on the inside of the tire, or the core of the tire, which was a lot cooler. And that obviously meant, you know, the tire lost a lot of performance and then the teams had to do a lot of what they call tire management. So in other words, they couldn't really drive full out or a lot of the drivers because of the fear of causing these these tires to overheat and then leading to a blister, which then basically meant that those set of tires that they were using um, were not as effective as they as they should be. And the reason for this is, and I think we can maybe just make a quick turn into the world of physics, is you know how why a tire works. And it's very important to take into account that a tire, and especially in Formula One, is only effective if the tire is at the right temperature. And the reason for this is obviously that the rubber that the tire is made out of is a, is a chemical compound. And for the chemical reaction where the rubber interacts with the actual tar of the track or the tarmac and where that chemical reaction leads to the most grip, uh, it, there's basically a peak or a an ideal temperature that that surface of the tire and the tire itself needs to be to be able to generate this chemical reaction and to generate maximum grip. This therefore means that there is, and the teams call this, a window of tire temperature. So i.e. a range of temperatures that they want their tires to get into that will enable them to basically have the most amount of grip from these tires as possible. Now, between last year and this year, what happened was, so the teams were obviously a bit annoyed and upset with the fact that last year's tires tended to blister, which then meant a lot of tire saving, and it also meant that um, because, you know, when you are in a race situation, if you are a faster car behind and you're sort of lining up an overtake on the car in front, you sit behind that car that obviously generates a lot of heat and generates a lot of, you know, turbulent air. And this additional heat and turbulent air meant that uh, a lot of the tires that the teams that we were using last year ended up blistering very quickly. The effect that that then had is obviously teams were not able to follow a car closely or a car in front very closely for for too long of a time with obviously the fear that the tires will end up blistering and then that means they will lose a lot of grip for the remainder of the race. Now last year this was obviously a massive issue and the FIA and Pirelli decided to address this by designing tires that are a lot more um, durable and a lot more rigid in terms of... Um, you know, it's going to take a lot more effort to, to get these tires to blister, which then means teams and drivers can follow each other a lot more closely, you know, on a track without the risk of damaging the tires. And I think if you watched the Austrian Grand Prix recently, you'll sort of see what I mean in terms of Max Verstappen being able to follow a lot of his competitors in front for, for you know, lap after lap after lap without his tires actually getting any damage. So that's why they decided to to move to the new 2019 spec tires but now what that the the let's let's call it an unwanted effect of of this move then meant that the actual tire temperature window so i.e the range of temperatures that the tires are at their optimum 
uh, has decreased or is, is a very narrow and also varies from team to team. So, for example, depending on the characteristics of the car, the tires need to be at different temperatures for, for it to work best for the teams. Now, some teams are obviously very unhappy with this because that then meant that they had some difficulties in terms of actually generating the performance that they want from these tires, which in, in, in layman's terms, they just didn't have the grip that some of the other teams have. And that's why all some of the teams are very upset and that they're proposing to move back to the tires used last year. But then obviously the teams that the tires are working well for this year do not want that to happen. So it's a big debate at the moment. But I think the conclusion that we can draw from this is that there was big outcry from all of the teams last year because the tires blistered and that they weren't happy with the fact that the drivers can't follow, which then meant that the races weren't as interesting. So Pirelli changed it. And then Pirelli changed it. And now the teams are unhappy because now they're losing out because some other teams are getting more of an advantage. And now all of a sudden last year's tires seem a lot more appealing. And I think all of these teams that are complaining just need to remember that um, they asked for this and they were all perfectly fine with this uh, when they were testing the new tires last year at, at some of the races. And then obviously um, when Pirelli decided to introduce these tires across all of the races this year. So they must just shut up and stop complaining. And that's my personal opinion. But what this does mean is that it's super important for teams to figure out how these tires work and how to build a car with the properties that can get these tires into the right window. But we can say also that Pirelli now wants to develop tires for the next year that does have a bigger window, which means that more teams can access this temperature, ideal temperature window more frequently. Okay, so I mean that's the, basically the whole saga around the current tire dilemma and the tire drama that's, that Formula 1 is experiencing. And I think lastly, I would quickly like to speak about, um, you know, tire strategy. And I'm going to expand about this a lot more uh, in an upcoming episode where I speak about race strategy specifically. But I think it is important to note that the tires and your selection of tires as a team plays an extremely important part in terms of the overall race strategy just because of, you know, what a big performance differentiator the tires actually is. And the fact that you need to sort of weigh up your tires degrading and the amount of grip that each type of tire offers and the amount of fuel that you have in the car. But as I mentioned, I'm going to expand on this a bit more in an upcoming episode. So watch out for that one. And there we go, ladies and gents. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back next week with another exciting installment of Formula One for Fummies. If you did enjoy this episode, please subscribe, like, comment or rate this podcast. Also, please go and have a listen at my main podcast, which is called The TF1 Show, where I discuss all the weird and wonderful things happening in Formula 1. You can catch me on social media, since I am on Twitter, where my handle is at TF1 Show, and on Instagram, where my handle is at The TF1 Show. I'm super excited to chat to you next week. Bye-bye.